On a cold, rainy, blustery Saturday in Campbellton, Glen Scotia's manager Mike Smith and his team would finish the last production of the year. The date was 28th December 1974. Campbellton's whisky empire had fallen. Most of its distilleries had closed and passed into memory. Those few which remained were adapting for a new world. Glen Scotia was one of those. A series of investments under new ownership spelt opportunity for the town and brought with it a great sense of optimism. Mike Smith was a local and had managed the distillery following in his father's footsteps. Mike oversaw the radical modernisation of the distillery. He would have known that these final production years marked the end of his special era under his and his father's care. While now we recognise the magic of the 46-year-old, it was likely laid down to be used when young, but was quickly understood that there was something special going on in this cask. The cask passed through the hands and care of 46 years worth of different master distillers, so when tasting it, it's like a view through the different eras of Glen Scotia. Today it marks Glen Scotia's oldest and rarest release. Some might say it's a thank you to Mike and his team for their work over the years, and all who picked up the mantle thereafter. Ian McAllister, who's cherished these casks of exceptional character, ensuring the final result is outstanding. A rare treasure and homage to a classic Campbellton malt. Dave, welcome to Glen Scotia Distillery. It's good to actually have you here sitting in the, the Dunnage warehouse. Nothing like being in an amazing space like this with an amazing drama in front of us. This is why you're here, the Glen Scotia 46 year old. What a heritage that's got. But the fact that it's the very last from that old, old style, old way of making it. Yeah. Doubly important in, Double. in terms of history. That's it really is. fascinating. 1974. So it's spent 36 years in refill bourbon casks, another six years in the first finishing cask, which was a first fill bourbon, finally four years in a first fill Oloroso. 150 bottles, it's incredibly rare. You're just toying with me now. Yes. I think we should try it. Absolutely. <laughs> I think so. I think that would be a good idea. Okay. Oh. Listen to that, that's worth doing again, isn't it? You know it's a good drum. Slange my friend. The colour's great, isn't it? Beautiful colour there. Wonderful. Ah, the classic Campbellton oil. What I love about this is it's that character that you get from long-term in, in refill cask. You get those tropical fruit and you get that kind of incense note coming through as well. Tropical, creamy buttery aspect there. I think that's the true distillery character there. And I'm glad to see Sherry uh, coming in there. That kind of link back to very, very early days of Campbellton. 19th century, you know, probably a majority of Campbellton whisky was aged in next sherry casks. It has that great quality that I get in Glen Scotia of having robustness, but also finesse. You would never guess there was three different elements there. Confluence of these casks really comes together. It really works as one. Velvety mouthfeel, as I say, you know, there's melted brown sugar, you're getting poached pears, baked down. Nice, 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 nice. And it is that textural quality, that feel, that slight oiliness, it's just kind of coating the palate. And the freshness of it. Yeah. You know, 46 years old, and it's as bright vibrant. and you know, vibrant. You know. Back of the palate, you got a lovely maritime salinity, lovely oils there, which really just bring it all together. So you've kind of got the three ages of Campbellton whisky and three ages of Glen Scotia, Absolutely. just in terms of cask. It's part of the DNA of Campbellton. And for me, Campbellton is like all of Scotland in one glass. Thank you for sharing it with me. Thank you. And here's to all the guys who made this all these years ago. Slangeva. Cheers.